testimonies, but let's not just wait for this platform to share testimonies. You know, we have WhatsApp, you can put a video, do share kind of like a, a short video. So let's not wait because I think we also want to kind of like be mindful of the time. We want to give enough time, not just because I'm preaching today, <laughs> but to the preachers to share the word. And, and also, you know, we also want to be mindful of the time that we've been given at Palm Sittal. So let's be mindful. You have different platforms where you can share the testimonies. It's great to see you. Is it this man? Can you stand? I'm prophesying that we're going to have a worship team from Curtin University. Yeah. These guys are incredible, incredible, isn't it? You know, so they're going to host the next Connect with their place and they're going to prepare the whole worship, whatever. But are we going to trust God? No pressure. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Tandiwe. Awesome. We're going to continue with our series that we've been doing on the book of Acts. How many of you were here last week? Yes. You enjoyed it? Yes. Okay, I, I, I could hear people were still singing that song. I have decided to follow Jesus. I will never sing that song the same or again. You know, and we're going to look at something very, um, very powerful today. We're going to look at what it means to be filled with this Holy Spirit. You know, so if you're watching us online, it will be great to see you at the, at the venue. If you can come, but those who are not able to come, we want to say hello, bonjour. So today I want to do kind of like an illustration. I'm not cooking today. I'm not showing you how to cook. For sure, for sure, for sure. You know, but I want to kind of like use illustration because when we're preaching the word, you know, sometimes when we see it, you know, it's, it's easier to remember. Like last week, what did you remember from the service last week? Probably that song that summarized the whole sermon about that missionary who, who was yeah. killed because of his faith. So the whole thing was about spiritual lameness. Don't be spiritually lame. Yes. Don't become dependent on other people. So today, my two amazing volunteers, you guys see all the ushers are dressed like this now. So if you need anything as ushers, you can speak to these beautiful ladies after the service. So come, Belinda. Belinda, this is for you. Come this side. Don't, no, it's fine, it's fine. Come this side. So I'm giving two cups to Belinda and to, to, to Shalom. What I'm going to ask you to do, I'm going to ask you to run around. It's not a walk, eh? It's like a running around. <laughs> Can you guys make space at the back for these people to run around? Just make space. Dave, can you make space for these people? So you're going to run around and you're going to come and meet me here. You're going to run around, you're going to come and meet me here. Yeah. Good? Okay. Action. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> Shalom, you're winning. <laughs> okay, come this side. One come this side, one come this side. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you've swapped this. It's fine. <laughs> I didn't tell you what's in this cup, yeah? No, I know. But uh, this Belinda, you can see she got a little bit wet. She <laughs> yeah. had some tissue. But Belinda had water in her cup. Did anybody notice how she ran? No. Yes. How did she run? Carefully. Carefully. Carefully yeah. She was yeah. very careful. She was, what was she looking at? Was she looking at the people here? No. no. She was looking at this cup here. And this woman? Anyhow. <laughs> Her cup was empty. She, she came even first, yeah? yeah? She came first here. She even won. No, no, there's no winner here. She, because her cup was empty, she was just running around so fast, and then she came here. Were you looking at the cup ever? No. <laughs> she didn't even pay attention to the cup, because she knew that there was nothing to lose. Mm. On this side, why were you looking at the cup? <laughs> she knew that what's inside the cup is actually important. Mm. She didn't want it to be, to, to fall. Mm. So you can, you can put them there. This is my illustration, my first illustration for the day. So what you, what you can see here, this cup was empty. Thank you, lady. Let's give them a hand. You know, when, we are, when we are empty, when, you know, when we're actually empty, we, we're feeling a bit low, there's no, there's no life in here. Do you know what? We get so distracted. Shalom was distracted. She was looking around. You know, she didn't even pay attention to what's inside because she knew there was nothing inside. As Christians, this is how we come. When we are empty, we get distracted so quickly. 
you know, we, we, we're not even like paying attention to what actually we carry. The other side is this Belinda. Belinda had water in it. She knew that this was precious. She knew that what's inside of this is important. So the way she was walking, the way she was running, she had to be extra careful. When we are full with God, you know, when we know what God has put inside this vessel, we are careful in terms of what we say, in terms of who we relate to, what kind of relationship do we, do we put ourselves into. So today we're going to talk about being filled with the Spirit. So what are you filled of? All of us, we're filled with something. We are filled. Have you met somebody who's filled with himself? We all know that one person. We all know that one person who's actually so filled with themselves. You know, you're like, what does that mean when you say that person is filled with themselves? It's like, whatever you're going to say, it's not going to matter. They're going to stick to what they know. That's it. They're full, full, full. Or have you met somebody who's actually full of bitterness? Oh, wow, Joy. <laughs> We're going to pray for you, Joy. I met a lot of people. Have you met somebody who's full of the peace of God? Yeah. Yeah? Have you met somebody who's full of the presence of God and the love of God? Yeah. How do you feel when you're around those people? Good. You feel amazing, yeah? yeah? You know, it's like when people are full with overflowing with the love of God, you know, it's like whatever's inside of you is going to know what's going to come out. So if this is water that's inside here, I couldn't expect coffee to come out. Whatever is inside of you, when I'm bumping into you, this is what's going to come out. You know, so whatever is inside of a person is what is going to come out. You know, this morning I want you to think about this. What are you full of? What are you full of? When I'm bumping into you, what's coming out of you? Do you know, I, I have a huge problem when I drive. I'm like, oh my gosh, road rage is a huge thing. You know, especially when we gotta be honest. We gotta be honest when you we actually going to be meeting at a bed, and then people just like cross you and you're like, Jesus, you know, I need I need the I need the spur of God to actually fill me. It's like, okay, it's okay. The Lord, the grace, we extend the grace. But you know, we all full of something. All, 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 all. Ephesians. 5 verse 16 to 17 says but do not get drunk with wine but be full with the spirit of god do you know the problem that we as christians we have many of us are unaware of this power many of us you know we are unaware of this power that god has filled us with this power do you know the same power that raised jesus from the dead is living inside of you just like belinda was so careful not to spill are we are we living as careful as belinda was running you know, she was so, I was looking at her, she was like looking here, you know, she's, you know, she's trying to rush, but she was careful. Mm. When we have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is like a dove that come and rest. You know, if I have a dove on top of my head, I'm going to be careful how I walk around, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I'm going to make sure that I'm walking so peacefully, that I'm not actually, this, this dove is not flying away. So as we, as we think about the power of God, the Holy Spirit, Acts 1 verse 8, we go to the next slide. Acts 1 verse 8 says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes. How often we quote that scripture? What does that even mean for you and I? You know, the word, the word power means dynamis. Dynamis, what, what's there in that picture? I couldn't bring one because I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't it's, it's a dynamite. dynamite. Yeah. Do you know that the guy who invented dynamite was looking for a word? To, to give to his invention, mm -hmm. and somebody gave him the word dynamite, which comes from dunamis. The Holy Spirit, the power that God has given to you and I is dunamis. It's like a dynamite. What does a dynamite do? I've never seen a dynamite alive, but a dynamite has the power to explode something, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you see a lot in a lot of wars, a lot of things that's happening. So a di the, the dynamite that God has given to you and I will explode the sin that we're living in, isn't it? Mm -hmm. When the Holy Spirit comes, it's not just for us to heal. It's not just for us to see signs and wonders and miracles, but the, to explode the sin, the, the habits, the sin that easily entangled in our lives, isn't it? Mm -hmm. He will blow up whatever your lifestyle is and whatever, and will replace it with something much better. That is the power that you're carrying. You know, I believe if we really understand that, you know, we're going to be very careful how we walk with the Lord. So the dunamis is the power of God that is working in us and through us through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. 
You know, you think about the word even dynamo, dynamo generates electricity. You know, a dynamo is something that is very active. It constantly moves. You know, when we have the power of the Holy Spirit, there's a movement that happens. It's not a movement that's based on our strength. No, it's a movement you compel. You know, I love, I love Dan and Neri's story because when you see, you know, they constantly share what, what was their life before Christ and what's their life now. You see when Jesus comes into your life, he turns your life upside down. If you, you are one way and you become another way. Peter, the same Peter that de denied Jesus three times. You know, now when filled with the, with the dynamis power of God, he's a different man. He stands up and he preaches. 3,000 men turn to the Lord. There's something happens in our lives. So often we forget that part. You know, one, one pastor, somebody asked the pastor, what is the greatest need of the church today? Do you know what was the answer? The answer was the, 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 the move of the Holy Spirit. You know, the power of the Holy Spirit, the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit. You know, this week, what are some of the things that you did when you knew that you were dependent on the Holy Spirit? And what are some of the things that you did when you're like, oh, I even forgot to pray, you know, I just, I know how to do it, I'm becoming professional. When was the last time you, you were dependent on the Holy Spirit for something? Even churches today, you find there's no move of the Holy Spirit. We become professional Christians. We know how to preach. We know how to lead worship. You know, we don't even pray. We don't even wait upon God. We don't even go to the throne room of God to say, God, what is it on your heart for your people? There's no dependency. The number of people who come here on at 9.30 to pray, you know, very few. But if we're not praying, pray is about our dependency on God. God, not my will, your will be done. So a dynamo, we spoke about this, this dynamite. You know, I love this word. You know, I was doing a research on this. It's, it speaks about this dynamis power. It says to be able, to be able to have the capacity to do something. What are some of the things that you feel you don't have the capacity for? When you have the dynamis power of God, because that's what it means, you have the power, you have the capacity to do that. You must be wondering where's Rosh going with all this dumbness <laughs> and power and what did she drink last night? What did she eat last <laughs> night? You know? If we go to the next slide, I wanna I wanna go back to the scripture that we've been studying, Acts 4. We carry on from last week. Last week we were looking at the persecution that Peter and John had faced, and they were facing the the Sadducees and the Sandrahin, and they were like, We're not gonna we're gonna we're gonna keep on preaching what we've heard and what we've spoken about. You know, that's, that's the name that we know and that's what we know preach. So verse 23 says, on their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported that all the chief priests and elders have said to them. So here's what happened. They were set free. They went back to their people. The 5,000 people who got saved, they didn't run away. They were still waiting for Peter and John to come out. So now Peter and John are giving an account to, to, to all the disciples, and they're telling the disciples what has happened. When they heard this, they raised their voices in prayer to God. This is what they said. Sovereign Lord, they made, they said, you made heavens and the earth and the seas and everything in them. You spoke by the power of the Holy Spirit to the mouth of your servant, our father David. And here you find... They, they're quoting Psalm 2, which says, Why do the nations rage and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. It's interesting. Why would, would they quote actually Psalm 2? It's interesting that they quote a scripture. Psalm 2 speaks about the nations are raging. So this is what's happening. To, to rage means to create trouble. You look at this picture here, if you go to the next slide. You, you, the nations are raging. Rage means to, to, to have like, you see these waves? The waves are raging. This is what happens. Some of you maybe are facing, your life has become that way. You know, Isaiah 57 verse 20 says, the world is described as a raging sea. You look around you, every single week there's something happening. You're just like, Lord, how is this gonna ever change? And, and here, David, this psalm is written by David. David is saying, do you know that why are the nations raging? 
Why are you leaders taking all this time to make your own plans? Because all your plans are in vain. All your plans are in vain. How often we take hours and hours and hours to actually prepare, to say, I'm planning this, I'm having sleepless night, I can't, I'm plotting, I'm plotting, I'm plotting. How is this ever going to happen? Do you know what Psalm 2 says? Psalm 2 says when we actually live like that, you know, when we refuse the authority of Jesus, we actually, God laughs at us. God laughs at us. God laughs at those nations that actually refuse. They're plotting how we can actually remove God from, from these nations, remove God from these people. God laughs at those things. So Psalm 2 says you only have two options. You can either refuse Christ or you can actually take refuge in Christ. And he was, he was saying, he wasn't complaining, what's happening around me? Do you know why are these nations are actually in such turmoil? But he's saying, you know what? You have two options. Are you refusing Christ or are you taking refuge in Christ? Interesting that in Acts 4, they're quoting Psalm 2. Because here, this is exactly what the, the two apostles did. They, when they, they faced the persecution, they could either take refuge in Christ or they could refuse Christ. In the same way, us, when we are persecuted, when we're going through moments of testing, you know, we often ask this question, why me? You must ask God, God, what are you doing? What are you showing me about yourself? What are you showing me about me? How can I learn about this? What are you teaching me in this season? You know? I love this picture because you, you, you can see here when something, when there's an unrest, when there's trouble, how it affects everything. Even us, when we're going through these moments of unrest, you know, you've had COVID or you've lost a job. It feels like the whole world is falling apart, isn't it? But sometimes we think just linear. We only think in this level. Could it be that God is opening another door for you? When Shady was leaving, did he even think that one day God's going to bring him back? You know, it was sad for us to, live, to see Shady going. But how the Lord made a way when there was no way. When we rebel against God's authority, when we choose to refuse, how do we rebel to God's authority? What does that even mean for us? We're not saying, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm renouncing Jesus now. No, sometimes in the smallest things we do that. You know, you can spend an hour praying. You pray for an hour. You've heard God. The next day you go on Instagram and you look at it, you're like, Oh my goodness, I will never get that. I will never get this job. You hear somebody's testimony. You've already negated what, what you prayed for. You have. You come here and you hear a great word, encouraging word, encouraging all of those things. You go home, you know, those voices come back again and you're like, oh, that word to me, you know, I'm never going to be able to succeed. I heard all these testimonies at church, but you know, God's going to only do it. You've negated. You've been praying for finances. The next thing, you find yourself in a difficult situation and you already speak death over that situation. And then you expect God to move. We need to align ourselves with what God says. Let's go to the next slide. We carry on Acts 4, verse 27 to 31. It says, Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in the city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you have anointed. They did what your power and what they will de had decided that should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and, en and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. And this is a prayer. If you guys don't realize, this is a prayer that they prayed, you know, when, they, when Peter and John were being tested. How did they pray? They were like, what did they do? The first thing that they did, they actually started sovereign God. Sovereign God. Imagine you're going through persecution and you're saying, Sovereign God? Sovereign God, that you're the God of the heavens and the earth. That's how they, they exalt the name of Jesus. They're lifting up the prayer. They're declaring who God is. Sometimes this is what we need to do, to declare who God is in our lives, to declare the situation of our situation who God is. And the next thing they pray, stretch your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through you, the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, what happened? The place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all full with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word, word of God boldly. How powerful is this? 
the prayer that they pray, the shaking that happens, and the boldness. You know, the church today is so divided, so divided. You find some of the people who are, word, let's, it's all about the word, a word, a word. Um, you find some churches, it's all about the spirit, spirit, spirit. But you know what? If you look at the early church, there wasn't a divorce between word and spirit. Do you know, they, their ministry was twofold. It was proclamation and demonstration. Do you know, if we got to be strong in the word, these people, what, what, what actually, you know, I was like, wow, these people did not even have a Bible, but yet they were quoting Psalm 2. How often they quote the Old Testament. So the word of God was not just like, oh, out there, written somewhere. It was in their hearts. It was in their hearts. Do you know what happens sometimes as Christians? We, we find ourselves in spiritual battles. Then we go and start looking for the word. Let me find that one scripture. There's no, the Holy Spirit doesn't have anything to work with in our lives. But they had the word of God. Let's look at a couple of things. I love this picture of um, being bold like a lion. They spoke with boldness. I want to just touch on that quickly. Boldness means to be lucid, to, to be daring in your statement, in the way you talk. But more than that, I love this definition where it says, tell it all. Tell it all. To be bold about something. You know, we live in a society where it's, it's all become about, like, oh, I've got to be nice, I've got to be nice. Do you know, I can't speak, like, do you know, even at work, so how often we, we actually don't want to bring the whole truth. Do you know, we, we just want to say the part that's going to be like, okay, I don't want to kind of, like, you know, mess up people here, I've got to be organized. But we got to tell it all. Oh, <coughs> they, they were bold, so they didn't even shy away from speaking the truth. Although they were persecuted for using the name of Jesus, they were telling it all. So they were not even saying, oh, you know, Jesus died on the cross. And then because they, they're facing the Sadducees and the Sadducees don't believe in res resurrection. So I'm not going to talk about resurrection with the Sadducees. Do you see how sometimes we keep some of those truths to ourselves? You know, you get a job, you, you get promoted. You know, you, you, you finish your degree with first class and your friends are like, wow, I'm not going to talk about Jesus. Do you know, what if, like, you know, they think I'm a, this religious person and I'm like weird, you know, everything is Jesus, 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 you know? Are you bold enough to testify about what Jesus has done in your life? The, so boldness, boldness was a gift from the Lord. Received through prayer. It wasn't something that they worked up on themselves, you know, that they just had. You see the pattern when they were filled with the power of God, the dunamis power of God. They had this boldness. And this place was shaken. Imagine we pray here and this whole building started. We, we just got up. <laughs> but shaking in the spiritual, spiritual sense that God comes and shakes things in our lives where we become too comfortable. We become too safe. We don't, you know, we don't engage some of those conversations because we know we're gonna get we, people are gonna persecute us. Love this. One of the things that you find about these disciples, you know, I just always just love the life of Peter. Just studying the life of Peter, you know, you find this man who did all sort of things, you know. And you find even the disciples, the, the people who became apostles, they were not people who were like all the learned, you know, people who were all like, um, you know, kind of like high profile people. They were like the simple, simple people. You know, they, they were known as the ordinary and the uneducated people. Some of them were liars, some of them were cowards, some of them even deserted, deserted Jesus in some of the most difficult time. But yet something happened when they were in the upper room. What happened? They were, when they were full, when they were baptized with the Holy Spirit, you find their life was never the same. You see the same people who were actually denying Jesus and running away in times of persecution. Now, they're actually preaching the gospel boldly. So they, what has happened in their lives from the time where they were in the upper room to actually now standing up and preaching? They were baptized in the Spirit. Baptism in the Holy Spirit is a once-off event when you receive Jesus. But to be filled with the Spirit is a daily thing. It's an hourly thing because we are leaking all the time. I'm going to demonstrate something here. If we go to the next slide. You know, it was, I love this. I've got a hourglass at my house and I love playing with it. 
you know, just love turning, turning, turning it upside down and I see the sand falling off. But when Jesus comes into your life, he actually turned your life upside down. Mm. Has your life been turned upside down? Do you know, if you think about something to be turned upside down, do you know that this was our life? Like, we were carrying on with our life, you know, we're loving stuff, you know. And when Jesus comes into your life, it turns it upside down. When you were living in sin, you know, repentance means to turn away, make a 180 degree shift to now to live for the Lord. You receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Has he turned your life upside down? Has he, or are you still living your own ways and just coming to church on a Sunday? If we go to the next slide. I love this man. I can't do that, but I'm going to show you who I can actually do this. You know, God turns things up, upside down for us. You know, when we were broken in our sin, God makes us whole. That's what it means to turn the world upside down. Do you know, you will never turn the world upside down if Jesus has not turned your world upside down. The extent to which you will change the world is the extent to which God has changed in your life. You know? You know, you even think about some of the, the statements that Jesus made. You know, he says, it is better to give than to receive. If you want to be the first, you've got to be the last. That's an upside down life, isn't it? If you want to be first, you've got to be last. Like, wow. If you want to preserve your life, you have to lose it. That's an upside down statement, isn't it? You know what I love about the disciples? They didn't leave their world the same way they found it. They didn't. You know, sometimes when we, we see the, the raging, the uproar around us, you know, that the world is raging around us, and we, sometimes we get so depressed, so depressed. Even the disciples, they saw that. You know, some of the things that they saw, probably, you know, it's like, how? How do we actually bring a change to this? If God has given me the dynamis power of God, the thing that will explode those sins, those injustices, how am I living a life that when, when I leave this place that there's a change, that the kingdom of God has arrived? Amen? Amen. You know, what, one of the prayer that, that you find Jesus in teaching, it's a prayer from the Lord's Prayer. It says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's an upside down prayer. That's to turn the world upside down. Your family, maybe there's sickness, there's patterns of generational curses, there's all, all sort of things. You've been coming here, you've been learning all these things. You, how do you apply this? If God is calling you to turn those things upside down, we take authority over those things. We pray that God will intervene in our lives, will break these generational curses and set a new generation in place. But this is what it means to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. As I bring this to a close, how do we get filled with the Spirit? Do you know, in the book of Acts it says, repentance when we repent of our sin sometimes we don't want to hear these words repentance repentance is not just saying sorry and then i do it again tomorrow that's not repentance that's worldly sorrow godly sorrow is really when i'm looking at god's eyes and i'm seeing how my sin is actually you know bring, bringing the separation between me and god and i see the damage that it's causing then i turn away from those things and i turn to the lord then we repent it's refreshing but also, I think the question that often we ask is, how much of the Holy Spirit do I have? That's probably a wrong question to ask. I think the right question to ask is, how much of me does the Holy Spirit have? How much of me does the Holy Spirit have? Do you know, when we get baptized in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of us. Are you aware of what's living inside of you? Are you making room for, you, for Him to move? Or is the is the fleshly desires, the culture, the things that's happening around us are actually influencing how we live our lives. You know, this, this filling is not a one-stop thing. It's not a one-time thing. But it's about keep on being filled. Keep on being filled. When was the last time you were filled? You know, sometimes as Christians, we only wait for Sunday service to be full. So what do you do for the rest of the week? You just run dry? Or just do your own thing how do you how do you actually get full you prepare yourself to be full with the word of God 
you know, the word of God, I love this. You know, here's a sword here. The word of God is a sword. It's a sword of the spirit. Ephesians 6 speaks about the word of God is, is, a, is a sword. If we do not know scripture and we're not studying and learning the word of God, then it means we do not have the sword of God within us. And there's no way we're going to be able to take the, the sword and fight the spiritual battles. So when we put the word of God inside of us, we give the, the Holy Spirit room you know, to, for us to work, to, to, to fight the spiritual battles that we find ourselves, that we're not empty. You know, I find it so interesting that Christians only go to prayer and to the word when they're going through storms. No wonder they're going to go through more and more and more and more storms. Because that means God is like, you only come to me when there's storms, so here we go. <laughs> Those storms will hopefully make you even closer to me. But there's a thing here. If we're not studying the Word of God, we're not filling ourselves, what is it that we're giving the Holy Spirit room for, to fight with? You know, have you, have you realized sometimes, you know, you're like, oh, a few, few weeks ago I read this verse and it, it didn't really make sense to me. And then a few months later, you're like, wow, that word has become not just information, it has become a revelation to me. Because that word was inside of you, and the Holy Spirit used that word, awakened that word inside of you, and used it to fight the battle. So how does that happen? It's when we read the word of God, when we obey the word of God. Church, we've got to be obedient to the word of God. we got to go. We can't just be, you can't, you can't eat only once a week. Sooner or later, you're going to disappear. How, does, how, how come that we only eat spiritual food sometimes when we come to church? Not all of us. Our daily meditating on the Word of God. Don't say we don't have time. We make time for what we value. If you value the Word of God, you will make time for it. So as I close, I'm going to do an illustration. You know, today is a day of illustration. God, I'm very visual, so God always uses these illustrations to teach me things. Do you know, so I want you to think about, um, you know, the day you got saved. You know, what a glorious day it was. And the Bible says, you know, when we, Sean, I hope this doesn't move. The Bible says, you know, when we, we get saved, we are a new creation in Christ Jesus, isn't it? Yeah. You know, so we get saved, you know, the old is gone and the new has come. We become this new creation in Christ Jesus. Can you see? It's all like pure. You can even drink this water. I won't drink it. But how amazing. This looks really great, right? You can actually drink it. But you know what? With time, what happens is because we're still living in this old world. We're still living in our flesh. You know, I wish when we got saved, we all became perfect. No. There's, there's a work that God is doing in our lives. Every day we, we want, we choose to either get closer to Him or we, we go away from Him by how obediently we come to his word. So this is what happens. Can you guys see? Okay. I will need a help. Can you hold my mic? <laughs> Just hold my mic. So this is our life in Christ. You know, the first day we get saved, we want to tell Jesus everything. We want to tell the whole world about mm -hmm. Jesus, what he's done in our lives. And then what happens? Because we're still living in this world. You know, you still have those friends that actually lead you, you know, to these, these terrible places. You know, it's still my, my old flesh. So, this is vinegar. I hate vinegar. My mom's like, use everything. I'm like, no. <laughs> this is vinegar. But this is what happens, you know. So then there's some bitterness. Vinegar is horrible. There's some bitterness that we add in our lives, you know. We just like, oh. You know, this person just like irritated me, you know, just treated me badly. Just add more bitterness, more bitterness, more bitterness. Here's some bitterness. Here's some dark things. Dark things. Buy some big vinegar. I've got my cold kitchen here. Dark things. What is dark things? Sin. Those sins that easily entangle. Porn. You know, I'm, what, I'm, I'm doing all those things that I shouldn't be doing. There's some dark things that's getting in. Can you guys see what happened to this water? Do you want to drink it? No. I just add some more, some more dark things that's happening in our lives. Do you know, I'm gonna add some, some tomato. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and add some tomatoes are all nice and juicy. You know, those those things in my life. You know, that is so hidden, that is so nice and tempting. You know, I'm just no. adding that in my life. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
Even the smell is terrible. Mm. What is that? Let's put some garlic sauce. That <laughs> some garlic sauce that represents, you know, those those things. Garlic sauce can smell terrible as well. Mm. You know, all those things in my past life that I just keep on adding, keep on adding, keep on adding in my life. You know, I'm gonna add some. I didn't bring chili. <laughs> <laughs> so here's some fish sauce, and I'm, I'm just adding, you know, just representing probably resentments and curses from my past and unforgiveness that I'm still keeping in my heart. Look at this water. Look at this water. What's happening here? Mm. You know, we just keep putting all those things in our lives from our past life. But then this is what Jesus says when you get filled with the Spirit, when you're getting filled with the Spirit, you keep on filling. If I don't get full, I remain that way. And then I bump into Gaitar, I spill that. <laughs> but then, if I keep on filling, if I keep on filling with the Holy Spirit, keep on filling, keep on filling with the Holy Spirit. Gross. <laughs> Look at this, what's happening? What's happening to the color, the bitterness, the anger, the sin, the sexual immorality? The generational curses, all these patterns of, of uh, sickness that I've been living with. What's happening to the water? What's happening to the water? I keep on filling. I keep on filling. I keep on filling. I come to church in my own devotional life. I get filled with God, His Word, His truth, worship. I praise Him. What's happening to the water? Can you guys see what's yeah. happening to the other things? What's happening to the color of the water? I can keep on pouring until that water gets clear. Isn't it? Yeah. That's the power of being filled with the Holy Spirit. I can just pour one more. Tomato is still at the bottom. <laughs> I, can, I can keep on filling, filling, filling. Is there an end to the filling of the Holy Spirit? No. There's no end. God can fill up to the measure that we give him space and room in our lives. You guys see how this is happening? Mm -hmm. yes. Amazing. Amazing. I can stop there. But you know what happens? I come to church on a Sunday, I have an amazing time with the Lord. And then I can go back. <laughs> <laughs> and then Monday, I have a horrible clash with my boss. That anger, that anger comes back. It starts again, it starts again. And then, I, you know, my spouse, we're having misunderstandings, you know. That old thing come back again. Vinegar. We're putting some bitterness, some anger, some bitterness here. If we don't guard what God has put inside of us, we will go back to the old ways. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, guys. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. This morning, we're gonna we're gonna play that song. God fill me up. I really pray this morning that you will never underestimate the power of that word to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, all of us we trust in God for things to happen in our lives. You know, for God to move. But you know, there's all these things, all the things probably from our past if we haven't dealt with those things. They come back to haunt us. Although we want to live a life that's pure and holy, but of all those undealt things, those things that keep pulling you to the back, to your past, you know, all those sins that are so secret and they're easily entangled, they keep pulling you back to your past. And then that water gets all, you know, dirty. Imagine, sometimes if I'm taking this water that is so polluted and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna pour it out, God overflow. What am I overflowing with? The people around me, are they getting the anointing, the Holy Spirit as the Lord is pouring, or is the vessel clean enough? In the same way, your, your pipes, if your pipes are not clean, you're gonna get dirty water. This morning, this is not a word to bring condemnation, but this is a word for us. How are we living our lives? When your cup is full, you know what God has put in your cup. You're going to walk differently. But when this cup is empty, there's nothing in here, you know, I'm not going to care. 
I'm just going to do my own thing. I'm going to live, you know, as as I live, not bothering about other people, you know. But this morning, we want to pray. Maybe you're here this morning. You have not even received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You have not even received the gift of the Holy Spirit in your life. We want to give you a moment. But all of us this morning need to be filled. We all need to be filled. Let's stand to our feet as and Trevor prepares us to go into the song. Um, um, you know, this morning I'm not going to pray individually for people. But I want you to open up your heart. You can see, you know, those areas where you are still living in your house. You're still living in the sin. You're still living the life that you were living. And Jesus has not turned those things upside down. There's a power here today. There is a power made available here today to turn our world upside down to turn this bitterness, that unforgiveness. It's not our effort, but it's the grace of God and it's the dunamis power of God that gave us the ability to forgive those who hurt us, to release those people, to forgive and to turn away from those things and to turn to Jesus. Maybe there are addictions that you've been struggling with today. Jesus is here. His dunamis power is here. Would you make room for him? Would you give him space this morning? Would you ask the Holy Spirit to come and fill you? Fill you to an overflow where we're not sin managing, but we're allowing the Spirit to move in our lives, to wash away those things from our lives and to make us men and women who would actually turn the world upside down. We're going to pray this song. Let not this song be like a, just a song, but let this be a prayer today. Amen? Amen.